You're listening to Cancer Convos with Brady and Stacy. Hey there, welcome to another edition of Cancer Convo, sponsored by Chelsea Smith Cosmetics and the Bismarck Cancer Center. I'm Bob Brady. I'm Stacy Sturm. And we're going on the Wayback Machine today, hopping in the DeLorean and going back. Uh, <laughs> I used to work with this lady uh, back in the mid-90s. It's Mary Riley. Mary Who are you Nora. calling a lady? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty um, bold of you to assume I'm a lady. And I gotta tell you, guys, here's the here's the quick Cliff Notes version. Put on my I, hockey skates and show you, lady. Right, I'll cut your <laughs> neck. Um, we worked together in the '90s, and I swear I may have talked to her once, personally on the phone since that time. Yeah, almost thirty right. years. Yeah. yeah. I follow her on Facebook. She follows me. I see. You know, she does the hockey stuff. She has she had a radio show, and I think it was Washington for many years. No, Eugene, Eugene, Oregon, Oregon. Sorry. Oh, okay. It, it, was, okay. A two, it was a success, a, my, a successful two woman morning show. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, that's rare. As I'm mm-hmm. watching Mary, you know, as she's going through her life and I noticed like maybe like two, three weeks ago, she's bald. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? Like there's only one thing that can happen with that. I know she had luscious locks. So she's maybe not she just it decided off. to go all badass, and no, like, I will... she's like, I'm done. Yeah. I, I did. I did that when I was 18, actually. Yes. <laughs> I took off the mohawk and I was bald then, but yes. I was 18. It was yes. 1984. There was a time when Mary was a rocking chick and she probably still is. <laughs> she still is a rocking chick. Know. That doesn't go you away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, I reach out and I go, hey, we did this con- uh, this podcast, Cancer Convos. I have thyroid cancer. Stacy has cancer. You want to join us? She says, sure. And here we are. Yeah, here we are. You know what, though? I have this thing I realized um, a few weeks ago when I was talking to one of my kids and they were when my hair fell out and it went fast when it went. Yeah. And my uh, my youngest was was pretty um, upset about it. And they said, well, mom, it's because like this really it makes it real that you have cancer. And I said, whoa, whoa, let's not let's I don't have cancer. I don't take ownership of this. I am fighting cancer. Yeah. And I loved that. And you know what I loved is that came out of my mouth without me having formulated that thought. It was just this immediate, like, I'm not in denial, right? But I do not have, I will not say I have cancer. I will say I am, I am fighting cancer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Cause when you say I have it, it's almost like you're owning it. Yeah. You don't want to take ownership of that bullshit. Nope. (laughs) Nope. Nobody. I did not invite this little invader in. It's got to go. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Enjoy enjoy your visit. Bye-bye. Yeah, so tell us your story. (laughs) What what happened? Okay, so in October, I went back for a follow-up mammogram, which was not the first time. I have dense tissue, so I, you know, I didn't think a thing of it, actually, when I rescheduled. And then when I was checking in, they said, okay, you're all checked in for your mammogram and ultrasound. And as soon as I heard the word ultrasound, I was like, oop. (laughs) <laughs> right a and little bit of a there, red flag yeah you guys from there it has been a series of intuitively knowing what's going to happen next like i knew that it was going to be a cancer diagnosis right and then when they said that it's invasive ductal carcinoma it's early this will probably just be a lumpectomy and radiation i said what if what if that lymph node isn't clean because I didn't feel comfortable with what they were telling me intuitively. Yeah. I was not feeling that. And they said, well, this, the first surgeon that I visited said, well, that's when chemo is really effective with this kind of surgery. He says, I see it with other cancers. It's about 50, 50, but with this one, it's super effective. And I was like, okay, good to know. And then when they did the lumpectomy, what do you know? The lymph node was dirty. And so then they said, but maybe still radiation. We got to, we've got to test that, you know, we're, we got to send that off to the lab. And, um, and I was like, yeah, you go ahead and do that. (laughs) Knowing intuitively (laughs) that it was not that, that probably chemo was going to be an option. And what I told my treatment team from the very beginning was, uh, I want to do this as aggressively as possible. I want to kill it with fire. That was the term I said, kill it with fire. And uh, so then, yeah, sure enough, my oncotype result was like 23% chance of a recurrence within the next nine years. Um, and so chemo would help reduce that. And I said, whatever we can do, yeah. I'm in, I'm all in. And Bob, the reason I didn't, so I I'd created a little Facebook group for, you know, my family and, uh, and people I know personally and um, and I have not managed to go through the over 1500 friends to yeah. collect everybody I know personally. Yeah. So you didn't know sooner, but I did finally let somebody, I, I think it was that post at the restaurant that where you saw my bald head. Yes. That was my first, that was my first public outing since October. <clears throat> that was your coming out party. Basically. <laughs> I, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
and I'm a, I'm a pretty smart dude. I picked up the context clues. Yep. There's something yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I just, for some reason, I didn't feel like blasting it publicly. And I, Mark, part of that might be protecting my business, you know, as a real estate agent. I don't want yeah. clients going, oh, I can't hire her. She's busy. Or, you know, she won't be available. Um, and also, it's just like, it's personal. It's a real personal thing. So I, you know, I, I feel like sharing it with the ones who I know personally first, you know, is the, yeah, yeah, well, totally. No, I'm not, totally not offended gross. at all. No, I just, it's just like, wow. Yeah. You don't, you don't, cause we know everybody knows somebody who has cancer. Like it's just, yeah. 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 And did you guys notice too, like when you first went to the cancer center where you are, like, were you struck by a sense of, holy shit, there's a lot of people. Yes. In this no, town. because I yeah. was really lucky. I went to a very small Okay. place where there might be four or five people getting chemo at the same time and that was it i was more struck by holy shit they're 80 years old mm. i'm i'm 47 yeah. Yeah. like yeah. i was i was like the youngster and yeah. um yep. and i'd say for most of my treatment i was the youngster so Stacey. i was more struck by that I'm 57 and they consider me a youngster there. Yeah. You know? I was so, like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Bob, Bob, you're a baby. You're th how long? So tell me with you guys, and I'm sure your audience already knows, but fill me in for just real quick. Bob, when was yours and where are you at? And Stacey, uh, you too. 2014. I had a, okay. like a big goiter thing on my neck. And I kind of remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it moved, I guess. The, my doctor yeah. saw it when I was in Cleveland. Uh, went and got it, you know, process, sure is cancer, touching your thyroid, to take the thyroid out too. Uh, like 30 lymph nodes in them. They took all those out uh, ever since now in the last about up on 10 years. Um, I have uh, four new growths. Well, two have been there for a while on my lungs. One's on my left hyaluronic, one's on my right hyaluronic. A uh, new one in the last six months on my stomach. And then one they just found uh, two weeks ago on one of my kidneys. That That is concerning. And they're monitoring. Okay. The good <laughs> words you want to hear. Just That's great. Freaking crazy to me that they're just monitoring I it. Love this. We're not going to do anything. That's what I told that you. Would... Like, I'm okay. Oh, you know, that would just make me insane. There's no these, way. We have these areas where we're concerned, so we're going to look. We're just going to yeah, watch. Then, what am I, what, I told Stacey, "What am I going to say? You got. You get in there. And you get rid of it. Yes. How much? Yes. I just don't know. I don't know how much woo woo meditation could possibly be enough to like." be chill chill with that like i, I don't know I don't, I don't know. know i mean yeah anyway that's my story yeah i'm fine yeah, yeah i thought <laughs> bob's been enough around enough women stacy he knows how to do that it's fine it's fine, it's, fine. it's, fine. it's everything's fine. fine everything's good it's everything's fine. fine um i was diagnosed with late stage ovarian cancer in 20 june of 2021 and like you i was not surprised i went yep. in and i was like yep I know it. Oh, yeah. Like you don't even need to tell me. I know it. It's it, I know exactly what it is. Did you have signs with yours then? Yeah, a hundred percent. But I think I just, I just you explain it away. Like you were just talking about oh. women. We explain it away. I'm tired while I'm busy. I've got a lot on my plate. Sure. I've run two businesses. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm bloated. Well, I'm a woman. We uh -huh. we bloat. Yeah. I look at a piece of cake. I gain thirty pounds and I bloat. So there was, I, I urinate all the time. I'm getting old. Well, um, yep. <laughs> so it was, yeah. I just kind uh -huh. of explained it all away until I couldn't anymore. I could feel it. Um, I had a 12 pound tumor and a two pound tumor. Girl. Yeah, I know. How did I explain that away? You sound now. You sound like a guy who waits until he's on death's door to go to the doctor. I, didn't I literally you, was, but you said stage four. Holy it moly! Was, yeah, the doctor said if I'd waited about two more weeks, there's probably nothing they could have done for me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So wow, I'm glad you went in when you did. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Good for but, you. Yeah. 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 But now no, I'm, I'm good so far. So good. I'm not going wonderful. Knock on wood. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, I mean, that's a, the thing I'm realizing too. Both of you is that, like, for the rest of my life now, I'll be watching. We'll be watching. You know, yeah. I mean, I know it's you a get it's to, a trip. You get you get to the milestones. I understand that. You know, there's the five year, there's the ten year. My best friend is a twenty year survivor, but you know, I know this has brought up things for her too. You know, so it's like you're always wondering. I I will always be wondering, especially since it was in the lymphatic system. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so. I don't think there's ever a safe milestone when you've had cancer. I feel yeah. like you're always worried you're going to get it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a mind trip. It's just Bob a matter of degrees. Yeah. Just yep. a matter of degrees. Okay. 
Yeah. You know, where's yeah. it going to move? And where's it going to find another home? And what, like, you know, for me, I have four spots where it moved from my thyroid. Yeah. So yeah. apparently I have something wrong with me, but what am I going to do? Right. Like, I'm set um, up. Yeah, a lot of things wrong <laughs> with you. I, I know. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Mentally, mentally, Such there's low plenty. hanging fruit <laughs> yes, right there. Physically. <laughs> uh, so I, this morning, I just had a, a chat with a dietitian because I'm going to do the bariatric surgery. Okay. Uh, I got to wait six months. So I got to do all that. My okay. uh, oncologist uh, believes that I have a hernia. I also have a hernia uh, in my um, stomach area as well that I okay. think is from scar tissue from my, my gallbladder taken out. Oh, um, yeah. Yep. But the doctor that took it out won't say that. No, it's not from me. Um, <laughs> I didn't do it. it. I, I don't know what you're that. talking about. Um, so anyway, when I do that in six months, I'm going to have the bariatric surgery. And my doctor believes that that will take, they'll get the cancer out of my stomach. They'll do oh. what they can to try to clean things up in my kidney area and okay. then go from there. So okay. I don't know, whatever. That's, right. that's good. Do. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. You know, when I, when I went in for my MRI, um, they did, they had me go back and get a second biopsy because there was another spot that they were, they were concerned about and it was mm -hmm. back a little deeper and, um, and it turned out to be nothing. Right. But, um, but when the surgeon, when I talked to the surgeon who I did end up going with, she says, you know, I can, I can take that one out too while we're in there. And I'm like, yeah, just do it. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Anything that might be. Yeah. yeah if I have a change. tiny, my, if you come across a tiny microscopic cell, pull yeah. it. Like yeah. I don't want any of it. Well, and it's funny my because body. when I was in my early twenties, there was a lump that, that we found on the, uh, the right side, like under my right armpit. Uh, on that side. And I can still feel that, but they told me back then that like, that's fibrocystic. Right. So like, yeah. again, having the dense tissue makes it harder to spot those things, which is why I think I will forever be an advocate of annual mammograms yeah. because yeah. I did start getting those. Um, and when I turned 40, when they suggested it and, you know, there was one or two years where I maybe went 18 months cause scheduling or, you know, indifference or whatever. Um, but I'm, but that's why, that's why it was found when it was, and it was only two and a half centimeters. So, you know, just back there hiding, doing its yeah. thing. Yeah. So <laughs> how did you handle treatments? Was it, how, how was it? Um, yeah, I'm, st I'm in the middle of them. Yeah. So I've got, um, I'm down two out of four and today would have been the day I went for my third, but I get to do this really cool weekend retreat with a group called casting for recovery, where they take women who have oh. breast cancer or survivors <gasps> and they, yes. they teach you fly fishing for the weekend. Mm. So I'm that's so awesome. I, yeah, so I postponed infusion number three, um, to go fishing, <laughs> to go fishing. I'm going, fly, going fishing. Why not? <laughs> Are you kidding? I get a chance for a free weekend retreat instead of like, <laughs> Hanging out on the couch, wondering, you know, when the I can always get an infusion. Uh, we don't get to go fly fishing no, on a weekend get a free every fly day. fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, if cancer comes back in seven years, I'll go. It's because I put that extra week in there. I know. Um, <laughs> but I caught a lot of fish. God damn it! That was but, awesome. But I can tie a fly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Montana and I don't know how to fly fish. What's wrong with me? Where did so, you grow up in Montana? Okay. I grew up in Montana. I grew up, um, actually, we lived on the Flathead Indian Reservation in Arlee. We lived up okay. on the logging road, that logging road that goes between Arlee and Sealy Lake. Yep. We were up about seven miles outside of Arlee on there. I was born in Missoula. Anyway, sorry. Bonnie. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. The infusions, though, you guys, where I'm at is like I'm dreading three and four because two was harder than one. And one was what took my hair. Like I was 13 days in and, um, yeah. and, and I, I ran my hands through my, like, what did you, how did you describe them? The, the luscious locks, Bob, my, yes, my, luscious locks. My, be my beautiful red hair. And, um, and out came like a bunch. Right. And I was like, you're listening to cancer okay, combos uh, with Brady and Stacey. And I remember saying like, okay, I guess it's starting maybe after my next infusion in a week, I'll, I'll need to take it off. And later that day, oh my God, it escalated so fast. Wow. Later that day, it was coming out in, in chunks. And I was like, okay, well, let's set something for this Saturday. I'll invite the kids. We'll make it a ceremony. I'll have my close friends come over. Somebody suggested that I have a hat and scarf party, another cancer uh, patient I know. And I was like, yeah, I'll open it up to all the friends after we do the ceremonial buzzing. Yeah. And on Thursday, I regretted putting it off till Saturday because it was painful. Like, did either of you guys lose your hair? It does. Yep. I still, this, this is. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and I've got two wigs and I just, I'm more, I, I have two wigs and I'll probably wear one it, for um, tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah, it did hurt. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It, it did hurt. It was yep. better to shave it off. It felt much better when it was Ugh. gone, when it was yeah. just gone. Yeah. And I feel and like so you feel like you're in control then. Before I felt yeah. like I was leaving hair everywhere I was going oh, and okay. I was self-conscious about it. So finally, one day when I, same as you, I just took out a handful of hair and I said, I'm done with this. Yeah. I'm just going to shave my hair and go to work. Yeah. Thank and you I for didn't your service the, hair. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do the whole mm. sit and cry and okay. do the big deal. I just mm. literally shaved it, put on a wig and went to work. Yeah. It, was, no, it just I, is what it is. I will admit I did. I did have some grief around it, but it was quick. Like the thing that I've learned to do over the years is to, is to grieve when I feel like something needs grieving mm -hmm. instead of, instead of fighting against it and making it last a lot longer. I have gotten practiced at just allowing the grief, sitting with it, feeling it, and then moving on through it. And, you know, so it cycles around sometimes, but yeah, you know, we, t I talked about, I was, I've, um, I've got a really great therapist these days and we talked about, cause I was like, you know, when you're a redhead, you don't, you, you get, that is a deep identity source. Cause as a child, you're not just a little girl, you're the little redhead. Right. So that yeah. is like an identity that that starts at a very young age. And so we determined, though, talking it through with her that, like, I'm always going to be a redhead, even if my hair, you know, even if my hair grows bright right? or silver, I am at heart a redhead. So that was that really helped a lot, too. Um, do either of you guys did either. Of, so when when they do the breast cancer infusions now, they they hop you up on steroids. Mm -hmm. Did you guys experience that? Did you get that, Stacey, Bob? Before yeah. the infusions? Yeah, I got a bag of Benadryl. I got a bag oh. of steroids. I got a bag okay. of anti nausea meds. Oh. And then I got my three chemos. Okay, so here's yeah. how it's going. Uh, the day before my infusion, I take these two steroid pills in the morning and I take two at night. Goodbye, sleep. And then the day of the right. infusion, I take two in the morning, I take two at night. And then the day after the infusion, I take two in the morning and two at night. So I am on steroids. Um, and I don't really feel a calm down until sometime late Friday. Um, and then what they do now too, you might've had this, I think the brand name is new last us peg filgrastum. It's a shot that I go in and get the day after my infusion and it's a to bone boost your white count. Or, yep. That yep. one knocks me on my ass. So on Saturday and Sunday, I am just on the couch, barely functional, not wanting to exist. And then for the about a week after that, like my mouth is all messed up. I don't, mm -hmm. my, right now my arms are looking pretty good, but I get all these spots, these red spots, like it's eaten me from the inside out. Did either of you guys get like super swollen red knuckles that were nope. sensitive and itchy? No, my, um, gosh, I, I agree that shot is yeah. worse than it's any an of the chemos. Kicker. It, yeah. it, 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 it knocks you out it, the pain associated yeah. with it, you, yeah. with your bones is yeah. just unbearable. Yeah. And they say to take Claritin, Claritin. Claritin. and no, Man, that's a know, bunch I, of bullshit. The Claritin I, does not work. Give me oxycodone because the funny. pain, the pain is terrible yeah. with that. Yeah. It's in the bones. Yeah. yeah. For me, I was like, I took the, I take the Claritin, but then I'm like, okay, I'm taking some Tylenol I'm taking some Motrin, which I don't usually take because yeah. of a, an autoimmune thing, but I'm like, you know, which side effect do I want? <laughs> Benefit versus, yeah. you know. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, only so. had, I only had targeted radiation treatments and a radioactive oh, okay. pill. Yeah. I haven't had chemo How, yet. Tell me about those. What was that like? How many of them did you get? Um, After my first, um, when I had it in 2014, that's when they gave me the radioactive iodine pill. And I was at Cleveland Clinic and they walk in with like the guys in like in a hazmat suit and like a yes. big urn, like a metal urn <laughs> or whatever. Badass. And, he goes, there's your water. <laughs> when I open this, I'm going to leave. You're going to take that pill out with the tongs and swallow it. And then you got to get up and get out of here because you're radioactive. Said, okay. So I did it. Walked out, got to the car, went home. And I was quarantined for three days in my room. Uh, no kids, no family, no nothing. Because wow. I'm radioactive. I can't be around. Like yeah. At that point, 2014, I had Max was seven and Bianca was five. So we couldn't be around kids. Uh, for oh, that sure. So, so I had to leave my meals at the, at the at the door. I watched a bunch of Netflix, whatever, whatever. Um, I had a second one of those probably two years ago. We were down here, and I've had my radiation targeted radiation. They just go to one side of my chest. I did like six or eight of those. 
on one side and then another six months later another one on the other side um and that's just you know he'd go in the doctor we had the table okay we're gonna shoot you full of radiation here it comes like okay <laughs> so then one of the side effects is could you shoot spider webs out of your with no, the, your no, radiation? no 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 hulk no hulking up no spider-man stuff none of that no you can't no, like out. hear things that are two miles away <laughs> no the funny part is mary and i i tell this to stacy too is like it's just like on the dentist right like they do the, the x-rays of your mouth like why yeah. are they behind the thing but i can't be there. why am i just laying right. there <laughs> okay okay i, I have to think. defend i have to defend the radiology department on this one i just had this conversation three days ago with somebody i said because they're doing it constantly yeah <laughs> okay i get, I get it. Then, yeah you know i'm getting one shot right yes. they're okay. doing that all day long so. yeah i never thought but, of that i'm like why am i here just naked yeah. no that's why I. Away. So. The reason I asked about that, Bob, is because when I do finish the chemo and I my last infusion, I so saw May 8th and May 29th are my last two infusions. Oh, hold on. I have to let the dog in. Okay. okay. <laughs> because we don't have a pet door in the garage he could use. It's okay, Hugo. Um, I have like a little break and then I'm getting six weeks of radiation, okay. um, five days a week for six weeks. So they're also going to radiate the heck out yeah. of me. Yeah, that's the thing is like, not only is it time consuming, I get it, we're trying to be healthy, but it's like, I got to go to the doctor and I got to yeah. go every week and I got to do this. And like every mm -hmm. time, I, yep. have you been here before? What's your medical chart look like? I mean, you have my stuff. It's right there. I've been here <laughs> 10 times. No, that is one of my things. Now that one, I can't defend anybody on. I'm no. not saying that. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. How, like, I just want to carry, you know, like a QR code with all my medical, here, here, they I've done this 700 at, times. They gave me one the last uh, play when I went to for my uh, my other oncologist. It's a card and it has a little scanner on there and says uh, medical records on this card, whatever it is. Like, oh. So somebody has done it. It can be done. It yeah. I guess. Or well, somebody did point out to me at the cancer center, Mary, don't forget, you're on the younger end of the scale. These are folks who <laughs> whatever. need to fill these forms out. Yeah, oh, but God. I did have a moment though, Bob, what you touched on there with uh, with the time time consumption. I had a moment maybe a month ago or so where I realized I was like this is just my life right now. Yeah. Like this is this is my, you know, it was it was and it was one of those sad moments too. Where I was like a lot of grief with it. I'm like this is my identity. Like, yeah. You know, and I do what I can for it to that that's almost kind of a um a despair moment because my identity, I'm still working with clients. You know, I just got somebody pending this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, so thanks. And, um, you know, I'm still doing things. I'm going fly fishing, right? I went to the coast this weekend with my boyfriend while he was in town. And I, and so I still have my life. I play croquet with the kids, you know, and, but it seems like it, it, everything is centered around the, the diagnosis and the treatment. Yeah. But cause you're constantly, if it's not, an infusion, then it's an appointment or it's a shot or it's a, mm -hmm. you know, it's, or a follow-up or you are filling stuff out online or it's, it is, it's, it's a, con being sick is almost a full-time job. Yeah. That's and, and I, mm -hmm. and I feel it when you were talking about how one of the first things you thought when you got diagnosed is you worried about how your clients are going to feel about it because I went through the exact mm -hmm. same thing. Owning yeah. the radio station, I was like, Oh, yeah. are, are people not oh. going to trust that I can help right. them with their advertising? Are they right. going to back out? Are they going to pull out? You know, yeah. it's, it sucks that we have to think about that when we're going through those kinds of things. Well, it turns out what I have found is that um, there's, and you know, and I have a huge support group, you guys, I am, I am, I am really grateful for that. I feel incredibly fortunate, um, you know, cause I, and I do a lot of giving back, like I'm big in the community and I have a servant's heart. So people keep going, well, now it's your turn to receive Mary. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to say yes. I am yeah. not that comfortable. I'm not comfortable with it. I yeah. am. And I'll be honest about that, but I will still say yes. I can, I, I live outside of a comfort zone, right? I don't even know what one of those is. So, um, yeah, and I have found that people are actually very supportive. Right now, I have a house listed, and the the two owners are physicians. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, the wife is always like, you know, we'll get done talking about business, and her next question, and very genuinely, like a doctor, she's like, "Mary, how are you feeling? How are things?" Yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah. get my stethoscope out. Let me check you out. Are you okay, <laughs> like, man, all right? Well, it's funny because I yeah, asked I'll take her a freebie. Something, I asked her about something that was going on. I'm like, so hypothetically, would if uh, if Somebody you had hired wanted to ask you a medical question. <laughs> She's like, oh, Mary, 
just to ask. Yeah, you I know what? Little, yeah. I got these uh, cracks in the corner of my mouth after the, after the infusion. Cause my, you know, the, um, is it dry? Is it because mm-hmm. you're dry? No, it's, it's because the cells in your mouth are, you know, the ones that get affected by the chemo, you know, it affects the cells that replicate the fastest, right? Yeah. The fastest. Yeah. And so the mouth, that's why the mouth gets all messed up. And then mm. these little sores in the corner and uh, the doctor said hydrocortisone. Oh, so, yeah. Right. Cause you know, those yeah. are pain. Add, when you get add some stuff, just add some stuff. To your <laughs> just, oh my God. I'm a drugstore for a week. Right. Um, I am <laughs> literally a living drugstore. Cause you should see me try to get to sleep at night that first night. Like I've got, um, I already have trazodone. Right. And then I was taking nortriptyline for um, some, a nerve issue. And so both of those help you sleep. So I added um, hydroxazine, which a <laughs> psychiatrist had given me for anxiety once. And it turns out I'm like, all that did was knock me out. And he's like, well, you got some good sleeping medicine. So I took a hydroxazine. I took a lorazepam and I still like didn't sleep. I got maybe three hours. So I was like, OK, the next night I'm adding a flexorol. That's it. Muscle relaxer going in there too. I'm gonna <laughs> you've got you've got every drug in the alphabet. Covered. She's a I mean, pharmacy. Yeah. Hold on. And here's where here's where I disclose something else. As a recovering addict, <laughs> that is not a comfortable thing to be doing. But I right. know I'm doing it. I'm doing it as a medication, not yeah. as a I'm going to get loaded <laughs> as an escape. Right? Yeah. And so right. Yeah. So I'm not using. I am actually medicating, and so I get to still say I'm clean, but it isn't that comfortable for me to go. I need more drugs. <laughs> but I do. What's your uh, What's your plan? What they have planned for you after these three or these next two? So um, so again, we got yeah the infusion May eighth, May 29th, and then about a month off. They said that was what I was told is generally about a month to let your body heal back up. And then I start that six weeks of radiation, five days a week. Um, That's another one I'm probably going to postpone till mid July instead of the beginning of July, because it just doesn't work out with your schedule or (laughs) Stacey called. I'm uh, taking off on a SpaceX (laughs) flight. I'm uh... If you knew what Oregon Country Fair was about, it's a three day out in the woods um, <laughs> thing. It's, it's been going on for over 50 years and I'm on one of the crews. So I camp out there from Wednesday to Sunday and then it's open to the public Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And I do bag ch- and it's just this it's an amazing event. And and everybody who goes is called it's fair family. You know, I mean, Oregon Country Fair is famous, um, especially among old hippies and 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 then makers and crafters and entertainers it's just amazing but so yeah i don't want to be exhausted during it like i could drive because it's right outside like people literally come from around the world and around the country for oregon country fair and i live you know 20 miles down the road from where it's held so i could come into town and do radiation um but you know what's one more week really You know. And it, the radiation does, it does make you tired. Like it tires you out. Right. I mean, you That's what I, mean? I hear. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 So, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't have cancer. I'm I'm fighting it, but I'm fighting it on my terms. On your terms. Exactly. On your terms. But, and again, I am, I am doing everything as aggressively as I can. And I really don't think one week is going to make a difference. Yeah. If I did, I wouldn't. Or if the oncologist said, said nah, yes. that's not recommended, you yeah. know, when the time comes, if they say, Mary, we don't recommend that, then I'm not going to, then it won't be my way. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I well, just Mary, it was it was amazing chatting with you. <laughs> yeah, it's really good I'm glad you could fit us into your schedule I mean, and you yeah. didn't like blow us off for fly fishing or camping or. Something. Or going out to the coast or cocaine with the kids. <laughs> Maybe even a business. Yeah. Maybe Sorry. even business. Sorry, you might want to try to fit cancer into your schedule, I Mary. A, I, I mean, had a croquet ever... tournament I was going to be in. <laughs> I forgot. I am not. It is not going. I mean, it does define me, but it is not going to define me. No. <laughs> yeah. Bob, it's it. really good to see it. you. And Stacy, I'm really <laughs> pleased to make your acquaintance. Yeah. You too, Mary. Yeah. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary, have a great uh, rest of your whatever you're doing. Fun life yep. you have going on with the cancer yeah. and everything. I mean, it's All awesome. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I love you, man. you too. I love you too. Hey, Cancer Convo is sponsored by the Bismarck Cancer Center and Chelsea Smith Cosmetics. Thanks for joining us. Have a great time. <laughs>